The White House has been sending mixed signals with its approach to a COVID stimulus re relief package. Trump aides are pushing for immediate action on a bill. Wait, wait, they... but I thought he, <laughs> wait, but he said he, <laughs> he, will he never was get killing this. It. He wanted to kill it. No, he, he wants immediate no, action. No, he said he wanted no, he it killed, that he was going to do it himself. Immediate action. Well, but I'm so confused. Are the steroids? It's just a tale of two this, tweets, Joe. Is it the steroids that are making him act this erratically? Yes, oh, actually. Okay. I'm, I'm, Thank you, doctor. I'm not a doctor, but... But you play one on I'm TV. I'm going to give him that excuse. Okay. Um, all right, so this is after the Trump administration's $1.8 trillion proposal was dismissed by both parties. Joining us now, House Majority Leader, Congressman Steny Hoyer of Maryland. Great to have you on the show. And Casey Hunt is on Capitol Hill. She's got to run, but she's got the first question. Casey? Uh, Mr. Leader, good to see you this morning. Um, let's start uh, right there, because, I mean, even Mitch McConnell has been out there saying he's confused about the state of coronavirus relief negotiations, and the White House has been insisting that they can get Senate Republicans on board. Senate Republicans seem to have different plans. Do you think that there is any possibility that a relief plan could pass before Election Day or not? Well, it ought to. It ought to pass uh, in the near in the next few days, frankly. But uh, as your lead in pointed out, Casey, uh, Joe uh, and Mika, uh, he's erratic. Uh, he's uh, impulsive. Uh, you don't know what he believes from time to time. And he sends mixed messages. And as I understand it from McConnell, he's got at least half of his caucus who don't want to do anything. Uh, sort of like McConnell's response to our May 15th bill, where he said, let the states go bankrupt. It's very difficult to negotiate uh, and stay on target. Mnuchin could do that. Uh, Nancy Pelosi and the Secretary Mnuchin reached four major deals dealing with COVID-19 and the economic consequences of COVID-19 and the health consequences. Four major deals passed overwhelmingly on a bipartisan basis. And then, frankly, McConnell and McCarthy, the leader in the House, walked away and said, let's wait and see what happens. Well, we've seen what happens. Uh, we now have over 215,000 people who have died, seven and a half uh, to approaching eight million people who have gotten sick. Uh, we need to act now. Uh, Pelosi and Mnuchin made four major deals. We ought to be able to make a fifth if the, if the president would stay on target and have a single message. Uh, we're not going to negotiate. We'll negotiate on just three things. And oh, by the way, now I'll negotiate. And by the way, we ought to spend more money than the Democrats have proposed. Uh, now, what money I don't think is really the issue. What is the issue is children and families and restaurants, states and local governments, all of which are absolutely critical if we're going to keep our economy uh, moving and confront effectively this virus. In, in addition to that, we can't come to an agreement on testing when all the experts say, all of them, that testing is absolutely critically important uh, to defeating COVID-19. So uh, very difficult. Uh, apparently, the president, whether it's on steroids, uh, but frankly, he was pretty erratic before these steroids. So uh, the steroids, <laughs> I guess, just made it worse. Hey, Leader Hoyer, it's Willie Geis. You can see how this is incredibly frustrating to a small business owner or a family trying to make ends meet. Watching this play out in Washington, they're not following it the way we are. They don't care who's to blame. They just need some help here. So what, in your view, could change the dynamic here? The, we know that Steve Mnuchin and we know that Mark Meadows is following the lead of the president, whose take on this changes by the day. How do you right. change the dynamic of this negotiation so those checks get out the door and maybe you can save some of those small businesses who don't care about the fight on Capitol Hill? Look, if the president stays on target with a single concept of what he wants to do, I think we can get that done. I feel badly for Secretary Mnuchin because he sits in the room with Pelosi and others uh, and says, OK, we're going to do this. And it is changed on him as he goes back to the White House. Uh, so uh, he then he has to call Nancy and say, well, we can't do that or we can't do this. Look, we're talking about, for instance, earned income tax credit. That is for families who are working but don't make enough money. Uh, we're talking about child care. We know if we want to get kids back in school, uh, which we need to do, uh, we need to spend money on education. We need to give the local uh, education uh, offices enough resources to make the schools safe or, in addition, to make sure that they can provide virtual learning opportunities for their kids.
Uh, so these are, are vital items. And yes, we want to do, we've, we've agreed on the airlines. We've agreed on he wants to make family payments. We've agreed on uh, unemployment insurance. Uh, we have 600. He's now up to 400, I believe. But we could we could make that deal. But we cannot leave people behind uh, that are in desperate need, for instance, nutritional help. We know that these food lines uh, with families who never, ever in their lifetime expected to be in a food line can't put food on their tables. We need to deal with that in a robust way. And every economist says that. Uh, Chairman Powell of the Federal Reserve said just the other day that, uh, frankly, the $3.4 trillion he thought would be uh, important to do. And he's saying doing $2.2 is also important to do. So I, I think the president's prepared to come to the money. He needs to come uh, to make sure that we can take care of the, of the states, whether they're blue or red states, uh, who hire teachers, who hire police, who hire firefighters, who hire sanitation workers and other critical workers uh, in our society to make our society work, and yes, to make it healthy and uh, be able to defeat this COVID virus. So I-, so you- I I will tell you, Nancy Pelosi and uh, Secretary Mnuchin want to make a deal. They made, uh, Joe and Mika and and Willie, they made four deals. Those four deals were passed overwhelmingly in a bipartisan fashion. Uh, Now we have uh, uh, this this change uh, back and forth of the president. I will negotiate. I don't want to negotiate. I'll negotiate this number. No, I'll, I'll negotiate a number higher than the Democrats want. Uh, we ought to get this done. Uh, and uh, we need to take care, for instance, the airlines. We'll all agree on that. It's not in, not in uh, a disagreement. Uh, but we ought to take care of testing. We ought to take care of children and families. Uh, we ought to take care of states and locals. And if we leave those behind and just do partial, well, it may be uh, from the president's standpoint good that he signs a check giving money to, to people from him politically. Uh, but an awful lot of people are going to be left behind, and the economy will not be uh, sustained, and health care will not be uh, uh, put forward as a top priority. Uh, the top priority, obviously, is the Supreme Court. While thousands of people are dying on a daily basis, the Supreme Court of the United States is the most important objective of the Republicans, and McConnell has said that. That's a shame. House Majority Leader Sonny Hoyer, thank you so much for being on the show this morning. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.